Well, this week it seems like I am concentrating on using common plants in uncommon ways. And this is a perfect example of that. This is a golden fortuny euonymus, a big leaved euonymus. There are also smaller leaved euonymus, both solid and variegated, that kind of look like boxwood. It could be a, um, a substitute for boxwood. But this is a plant I kind of have a love-hate relationship with, and I'll tell you why. Now, this one started out as uh, just a blob, basically, when I bought it. I've had this one for years. It has a strong central stem, albeit leaning a little bit. But I uh, cultivated it, I pruned it up, and now it is in a topiary form. Now, one of the downsides of euonymus, uh, Manhattan euonymus, any kind of of that plant is that they are prone to scale and sometimes white fly. So what I use for that, I showed you this the other day, and I'll put a link below, I think I forgot the link last time, but I'll put a link below to this where you can get it. And I'm not doing that this to sell this kind of thing to you, you guys. I'm doing this because so many of you ask what I use, and this is just a way that you'll know exactly what I use, where I get it. You can easily um, obtain it yourself, and I don't have to answer a bunch of, of the same questions over and over again. So I've just been spraying this really well because it has a bit of scale and white fly and I already did a little bit of pruning on it and now I am going to remove any kind of foliage underneath that might be kind of pest riddled then I'll put a top dressing of gravel on it and this one will be good to go but now let's go to another part of the garden where I want to take a look at another golden euonymus, but that is in a, um, a shape that needs a little bit more help. Now, Stuart is walking backwards, so Stuart be very careful, and, and six feet away, so just be careful that you don't trip on anything. Okay, this guy over here, hopefully the camera can adjust to this lower light level. So over here, I have another golden euonymus. And this one is planted at just the intersection of the gate and the fence. And you can see it has some potential. It also is starting to show a little bit of scale. So I will also treat it with this Dr. Earth um, organic insect killer, but I'm gonna do that after I prune on it a little bit. That way I'll be able to get to the interior of it much more easily. Now here is what you can do to kind of assess the plant itself. I could do a couple of different things like for, with this one. I could make it columnar and I could prune it up on this side and prune it some over here, some of this bulk in the front. And because it's got a really good, strong central leader, I could very much do it into a tight Christmas tree shape. However, I could also, I think, prune this one into a double ball topiary. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I would do that. So. As I've mentioned before, you just start out by looking for a good, strong central stem with a leader. And this one has a good, strong central stem, and it's got a strong leader, so it can grow even taller, maybe even into a triple ball topiary form over time. And uh, coincidentally, I will probably also have to prune back a lot of this shady coverage over here so it will get a lot taller and get a little bit more light and maybe make it less uh, pest prone. So this is going to need some staking after I'm done to get it to stand up and fly right, but I'm just going to first identify where the top of my ball would be, of my top ball. And, and so here is the top. I'll probably well, I'm gonna leave this in case I want a third ball. So now where's the bottom of my, of my ball? Sorry, it's right about here, I think. So I'm gonna first of all define where that is by just removing some branches. 
And I'm going to remove that one. You can already see almost immediately, you can almost immediately see the potential. This one over here, I'm not going to need. You can see how this is excessive. Stuart, can you see that? How I don't need this anymore? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down and get rid of it. And again, it begins to expose what the form is going to be. So I'm going to trim this up a little bit. This is such fast, gratifying work, you guys. I've been eyeing this plant for a while to do just this, but I wanted to save this so that you guys could help me while I'm doing it and keep me company. Now this down here is kind of scraggly and needs to fill out and get more density on the interior. And by pruning it, this is going to force new growth. So once I get this all clipped up, I will treat it for pests and I'll give it a feed. But just the act of pruning itself will force new growth. And we're still in the growing season. And this is the beginning part of August, so I'm not worried about doing this and forcing growth right before winter that might not be tempered to cold, um, to cold weather. Stuart, can you see that? Okay. So now I want to show you right here. I'll do a close-up. So when I say scale or spider mite, this one probably has both. You can see those little white dots on there and sometimes on the back side. White fly, if you go like this, you can see little white flies will scatter everywhere. In this case, they're not scattering, so I'm fairly certain that this is scale. Here's some more of it. And you can see all the scale on the clippings in the basket, which will go into the trash can, not into the compost pile. So whatever I'm treating it with, in this case, this Dr. Earth stuff, notice on the front, it says white fly and scale. So I'm using something that's very particular to the pests that I'm having to contend with. And that's important. Now, I will have to do this, spray it multiple times to get uh, the maximum efficacy from the pest control. And I will do that. And you can see why I waited till after I pruned it to spray it. Because now I can get and penetrate into the canopy of it much more easily. And I want this to be a little bit broader at the bottom. When I prune out this overhead canopy a little bit from this Japanese maple and the red bud, I'll get more light down in here. The other reason I'm doing this is that large section that I took off was getting ready to kind of impede exit and entry into the gate. So I am solving multiple problems simultaneously. So I have, how long did that take us, Stuart? Seven minutes? Okay. So in seven minutes, I took a rather ungainly plant and turned it into, into something gainly, <laughs> if that's a word, um, into something that I will like much more, that's much more distinctive. I always, if possible, in double ball topiaries, and it's not always possible, I like to have the, the, the smaller orb on top and the larger orb down at the bottom. And I'm being pretty aggressive because I really want new growth to flush out. So 
I actually already have a lantern stand right here, so I think what I can do is just get something to secure this to the plant stand itself, and I may not even have to stake it. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I clean up any of that pest riddled foliage underneath. I don't want any of those critters to take up permanent residence here. And then when I spray, I will not only spray the plant itself, but I will then spray kind of the soil around the plant. That way, if any of them fell off or they're hiding out, like robbers in a cave, I've flushed them out. So there you go, you guys, taking an uncommon plant and transforming it, or taking a common plant rather, and transforming it into something special and uncommon. And there you have a topiary in about eight minutes or less.